Let's start by looking at other Wallabies kicking under tremendous pressure. This kick will decide the fate of the Brenners Low Cup. So it's all with Sterling Mortlock. Think of Benny Perkins, Sterling Mortlock, slow it down and bang it between. The Tri-Nations rests with his right kicking boot. Has he kicked it well? Oh! Sterling Mortlock from touch has put Australia in the leads. It's such a vital kick to the aspirations of Australia to go through and it could send the defending champions home. This would take the lead for Sterling Mortlock and Australia. It's certainly big enough, but it's going to the left-hand side. Let's look at Eels and Morlock again in slow motion. You can see that the immediate follow-through with both of them, their foot is travelling towards the posts. They're also quite upright, and their head is close to the ball at the point of impact. Now look at Giddo's more recent misses. This to win the game. He's missed it! He has missed it! Gitter, I'll say it again, he's a genius if he snots this one over. Gitto gets this, the next kickoff is going to be very, very important. He's missed it. Oh my goodness. About 36 metres back, pretty much in front. Matt Gitto. Will it come round? No. no. All of those kicks were under great pressure and all were missed to the left. This graphic shows the arc of a kicker's leg when they have an upright stance like John Eels. When a kicker's body is at more of an angle, the foot goes across the body more in the follow through. Looking at it from above, the arc for an upright kicker looks something like this. For a kicker whose body is more on more of an angle like Gitto, the arc looks something like this. Now with a kicker with an angled body and leaning back too far, the arc goes right across the body. Compare those three arcs and you'll see the difference it can make. With Giddo's angled body and leaning back, it's no wonder he's pushing the ball to the left or pulling it to the right. There's plenty for a kicking coach to work on.